Hi everybody, this is Ben Songrath, Lead Regional EdTech Coordinator for the Learning Technology Center of Illinois. And in this month's Tech Tip video, uh, we're going to discuss healthy cell phone habits. Uh, so as I've been traveling around doing a lot of digital citizenship workshops, I've noticed that there are a lot of educators out there that are unaware of all the really great features uh, that both Android and iOS have built in to help manage our time that we spend and in how we engage with our cell phones. Uh, in such a manner that it's able to reduce the distractions, to limit notifications, uh, and to really monitor even our screen time and how we're using our phones. Uh, so in this video, we're going to dive in uh, to how you can help manage those healthy cell phone habits. I hope you take some of this stuff away, you pass it on to students, and you just pass it on to family and friends. Uh, because there are a lot of ways that our phones are actually designed to help us not become fully addicted to them. Like many of us are, myself included. So I hope you find this video helpful. And as always, stay tuned for more uh, helpful tech tip videos every month from the LTC. Okay, let's look at how we can set up some healthy phone habits on our iPhone. So one of the things that we want to look at is screen time. How are we using it? How are we able to maximize you know, the parameters that we can set on this? And a lot of the other things that we're going to look at today is up in our settings in our phone. So we're going to tap on settings there. We're going to go in, we see our settings. And the thing we're going to look at first is that screen time option. So if I scroll down just a little bit, you'll see you'll have screen time in that second block. If I tap on that, I'm going to see my screen time. Now, I actually, on my work phone here, didn't have screen time set up. Uh, and when I set it up prior to filming this video, I found that you can actually set this up for your kids. Uh, and you can control their screen time through a parental control, which would be super helpful. So check that out if you haven't set that up already. Now, one of the cool things in the screen time is it's going to show you all the apps that you've been using and how long you've been using them for on a daily basis and give you an average and all that good stuff. You can also set up some parameters. So like you can go in and set up limits on certain apps. So if you know you scroll TikTok for too long, go in, set a parameter on that and only let you scroll for about whatever amount of time you want to set up. Now with that, you can snooze it and continue to use it, but at least you have to be conscious about that. You can do a lot of other things in here too. For example, set communication limits. So if you only want to talk to certain people for a certain amount of time, you can do that in the communication limits. Uh, it's a really helpful way maybe to block out certain individuals that might be unhealthy uh, in your communication. Something maybe with your kids uh, that you would want to look at for their friends that maybe you don't approve of. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. So there's a lot of cool stuff in here. You can see all your activity as well, all the different tools that you use uh, on a daily or weekly basis in there. All right, let's back out. Now we're going to talk about uh, limiting how people can contact you and get notifications. Those are going to come in your focus modes. Okay, so we're familiar with focus modes from probably Do Not Disturb. Do Not Disturb turns on and eliminates all notifications coming through your phone. Super helpful uh, when you are, need to focus on something. Now, that said, we have certain people we probably want to be able to get a hold of us at any time. And if you put Do Not Disturb on when you go to bed at night, that's great, right up until maybe somebody in your family wants to get a hold of you for an important reason. So what I like to use is the new sleep feature. So this came out a, a little while ago with one of the iOS updates, but it's fairly recent. And I'll turn on sleep focus because sleep allows me to have my favorites in my contacts still get a hold of me through either text or uh, video call or through calling, uh, even if I'm on the sleep focus. So I put this on so that way if you know my dad needs to get a hold of me, my mom, my wife, if I'm out of town, need to get a hold of me, they're able to get through and wake me up to, to notify me of something. So that's really helpful. You also see you can turn apps on to allow them to get through the notifications. So if you have like a family app that like tracks and monitors kids, uh, that could be one that you would put in there so that way you still get those notifications. But this is a great way to teach your students, your kids, yourself, how to limit those notifications that interrupt us during our sleep. Uh, you can also set up several other focuses for like work. Uh, you can also create your own by hitting that plus sign up there. Maybe that's a good one to turn on for like homework where only certain apps can get through when students are doing their homework. So really a cool way to help out. Now you don't have to always go into your focuses in your settings to get to that. You're going to get to those by going down and pulling down and going on your control center. So that's in the top right corner of your screen. You pull that down and then you'll see you have focuses there. Now, if you just tap on it, you'll immediately go into do not disturb. So what you want to do is tap next to it and then you'll see you have sleep and do not disturb and then the personal and the work ones. Um, so you can turn those on and off through there. You want to make sure you go in every morning after you turn sleep on, you want to turn sleep off in the morning or else it stays 
like that uh, and will limit your notifications throughout your workday, which would be bad. Uh, also, if you have a MacBook, an iPhone, uh, multiple iPhones, or an iPad, if you turn on those uh, focuses, they go across all your devices, uh, which is pretty cool. Next thing up, notifications. So we get students that get bombarded, kids that get bombarded, people that get bombarded, adults that get bombarded with notifications from certain apps. Maybe we don't want those. So what we do is we can go in and turn those off. They get defaulted to on. We often suggest or accept like app notifications as soon as we uh, download an app to our phone. We can go into the notifications area if you're getting too many notifications and say you want to turn off Gmail notifications. Go ahead and do that. Go to notification settings, notifications, find the app, turn off the notifications. Or if you get too many banner style notifications, turn those off. Too many sounds, turn the sounds off, just get the badges. So, you know, you can get those and you can have those turn on and off if you so choose. So that could be a healthy way to limit certain notifications from coming through on certain apps. Our last uh, tip here is for sleeping. So I am a, a phone scroller at night. I know I'm a phone scroller at night. Uh, I, should I be a phone scroller at night? Probably not. But there are certain things that I use to help me with that. And one of those is actually called uh, dark mode. So dark mode turns your white screen black, which then helps you know your eyes reduce the amount of blue light. Uh, there's some conflicting reports on out there if it really helps or not. I personally really like it. I don't like the white screen staring at me in the face in dark rooms. Now, there's an easy way to get to it if you pull down your control screen center. But if you look at this, I don't have it. Well, that's because you have to turn it on. So you want to go into your settings again and go down, scroll down just a little bit to the third block here where you have general and then control center. This is going to show you all of the different controls that you can put into that control center. So there's a few in here that I want to turn on that aren't on this phone. So dark mode is one. You'll see that is the fourth one down. I'll just hit that little green plus sign. Now you can see it's added to the top. There's another couple in here too that don't have anything to do with what we're talking about today, but I do like low power mode and alarm and code scanner. That's going to be a QR code scanner. That's going to be really easy to get to. You can also see some other fun ones in here too. Uh, so if you wanted to add those, you can, but these are the controls at the top that are now going to be in my control center. So if I pull down from the top left or top right, boom, there you go. You see, I have four new ones in there, which is pretty cool. So when I'm looking at that, I'm going to be able to tap dark mode, which is going to be the, uh, where you see the red flashing light. That's the record, what I'm using right now to record my phone. And then right next door to that is dark mode. So I tap that, you'll notice the screen goes black and that is going to be much easier for my eyeballs to stare at all night. Uh, so I often do that, or if I'm in a dark room, I'll change that, you know, to, uh, to help out, which is really, really helpful. Now, the last one, I'm unsure if it's going to come through really well in a recording. I'm actually going to turn dark mode off for this one, and it's going to be called night shift. So night shift is the ability for you to uh, kind of eliminate the blue light by turning your phone like an amber screen color um you know and it, it really really helps at night like i promise you it really helps at night so how you do that is you again we're going to go into the control center you have your brightness here so the brightness is nice but what we can do is press and hold on that and then you're going to see an option down at the bottom for night shift it's right in the middle you can also turn dark mode on and off here we're going to tap on night shift when i do that for the first time i'm able to set up a schedule which is great i do this on my personal phone so i hit schedule settings and now I can schedule this out and I can say from 10 p.m. when I usually go to bed, even though it's kind of a little bit late for me, uh, I would go to turn off now, but I wake up at 5.30. So I would go here and scroll up and set that to go at 5.30 a.m. And now that's going to be my custom schedule. So every night at 10, night shift's going to turn on and every night or every morning at 5.30, it's going to automatically turn off. Now I can always go in and adjust. So what you can do with this is you press and hold, turn night shift on. Again, hopefully it comes through in the video, but it gives you a nice amber tone, which is really helpful on your eyes. And then you can see the color temperature. You can kind of adjust depending on how your eyes react to that. And that's just really nice to be able to put on at night when you're scrolling through your phone trying to fall asleep. So we should all probably leave our phones away at night, but if we are going to be scrolling our phones, I highly suggest turning on night shift to help that out. And when you want it off, just go back in, press and hold, turn it off, and then it's off. 
you know, so maybe you're up past 10 o'clock, it comes on, uh, you can turn it off and then you can manually turn it on when you go to bed. So those are just some of my really great tips on how you can build some healthy phone habits using your iPhone. So I hope you found this video helpful. And uh, as always, stay tuned to more fun tech tips from the LTC.